Hey, what's up? It's me. And so I know a lot of my regular subscribers, by the way, I'm wearing band camp gloves <laughs> because I don't want to get fingerprints on this. Um, I know a lot of my subscribers would rather watch paint peel than watch one of these videos, but then there's uh, an ass for every seat, as they say. So there's got to be somebody out there that's interested in this type of stuff. So I'm going to actually try to not to make this video a 20 minute video because most people have an attention span of 33 seconds. So I wanted to show you some of the scent box, uh, scent boxes in my collection and these are antique these are actually most of them 99.9 .9 of them are french and so here is one that is probably from the napoleon the third era which napoleon the third was the nephew of napoleon you know what i'm saying the real guy the the short guy <laughs> that we see in history um the napoleon complex you know that dude all right so uh what i'm trying to think when was napoleon the third um, an emperor. Hmm. Hold on a second. Let me Google that. I'm back. Um, <laughs> he was first president of France from 1848 to 1852. And, uh, his name was Charles Louis or Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. And then he became emperor from 1852 to 1870. And so this is from that time frame. And look at the beauty of this. Look at the, by the way, my dog is humping a stuffed animal right now while I'm doing this video. Hold on one second. I had to kick his gnarly stuffed animal across the room. And he's, uh, he's actually interrupting my video. Okay. If you hear grunting and stuff like that, just ignore it. Okay. So, uh, look at this beautiful workmanship in the top. Um, that's some kind of like, I think brass or bronze or something in there with mother of pearl. Um, you can see the little white flowers that are mother of pearl. And, uh, we have this little original lock and key and nine times out of 10, as I collect these, I can never find the original keys with them. So that is a plus. Okay. So what's inside and there we go. Okay. So what is inside? is these beautiful scent bottles and oh my god my dog is continuing to do dirty things underneath me hold on one second i have to kick his nasty stuffed animal out of the way okay uh, so 90 percent of these come with these um perfume bottles in them that are probably made by baccarat um baccarat baccarat um in france and uh these uh gorgeous gorgeous scent bottles are amazing so they come with these little original stoppers and look at this gold gilding, really nice. And I can still smell the perfume and I'm gonna sniff it right now. My God, how does that last so long? I mean, this box was made anyways between 815, 8, 852. I'm having, don't mind me, I'm having a little bit of a mental uh, breakdown. Um, 1852 to 1870. And so as you can see, I did a lackluster repair to the inside of the box. It was missing the little um, velvet piece with the cutouts that you, stick the little bottles in and I made my own and I don't know how to sew and I don't know how to like actually do anything crafty but um yeah it's a uh, semi okay I guess um I covered a piece of cardboard with fabric and that's how I did that look at the interior of the lid <laughs> you can see the original velvet pillow top is like threadbare and you can see the stuffing inside quite cool all right next I'm going to show you another uh one that I have in my collection hang in there so this one is a little more boring than the other one. It has less decor on it, if you know what I mean. And uh, both of them were made out of either ebony wood or ebonized wood. And uh, this one isn't like my best ones in my collection. And as you can see why, it's because it's missing a Baccarat glass bottle, um, a French Baccarat glass scent bottle. But uh, here we go, and I'm going to show you how cool these bottles are. Look at the little gold stars. Um... And the gold stars on the cap, quite cool. Sometimes you'll even find them with a little bit, whoa, oh, I was going to say shit, but yeah, I said it anyway. Um, sometimes they even come with a little bit of the perfume inside the bottle. And it's like fossilized perfume, almost like amber. And uh, I guess we have a mark on the bottom. All right, I'm going to show you my next one. Did I break this? Crap. I always do something stupid on video. All right, let's uh, get the next one. Now, what are these things, by the way? Well, pretty much women had a box for everything back in the olden days, even men. They kept uh, their stuff in boxes and uh, they would travel a lot. So a lot of people would actually uh, get a trunk, fill their trunk up with their belongings and go traveling. And so they needed to protect their beautiful things with boxes. And there you go. It's like a trunk uh, to go inside a trunk. 
uh, to hold bottles. All right, let's get the next one. So this one is like probably my second favorite one in my collection. Again, from probably the same era, the Napoleon the Third um, era. And uh, as you can see, it has its original key. And let me try to show it to you right there. You see that original key and original little tassel. Really quite cool. And the really great part, hold on. Um, this thing is very slippery because I polished it. We have tortoiseshell um, and it's called Bulwark. And uh, we have tortoiseshell with this beautiful brass design in the top. And uh, that is unmistakably French. This type of design of uh, what's known as bulwark with the tortoiseshell was probably in fashion, probably in the 1700s, and was carried on through uh, subsequent generations. And uh, look at the workmanship on this ebonized wood. Now, a lot of these boxes were made with very exotic woods. This wasn't for uh, poor people. Usually the wealthier, well-heeled uh, well women uh, had something like this uh, to hold their perfume bottles. And uh, here's what I notice. I do not think that these bottles are original at all. Um, this is not something from the uh, Napoleon III era. Unless I'm wrong, I could be wrong. There's this beautiful starburst pattern, silver top. But these appear to be English to me, unless, let's see, does it have an English marking in it? If it does, then these bottles are probably not original. Or maybe they are. I don't know because I'm not too much of an expert. But uh, we also have, um, I think, a design on the top with somebody's initials. Quite cool. But I really do not feel that these bottles actually originally came with this. So what are you going to do, right? Shit happens. All right, so next, I'm going to show you the next uh scent caddy in my collection next one is a beautiful again probably napoleon the third um or maybe a little later um olive wood uh scent casket and uh this one has a uh, beautiful like tiger stripes going throughout the uh wood um pattern as you can see here um and this one does not have a key or a lock so this was probably a little bit of a more of a middle class ladies uh a scent caddy box but then again what do i know i'm not an expert I always leave papers in here, by the way, so if I drop dead, my kids will know what my things are. I always make videos like this, actually, for death purposes. I'm very uh, morbid, and I have bad anxiety, and I always think I'm going to die soon. And yeah, if I have a pimple, it's immediately a tumor. And so I make these videos, so if I drop dead, my kids will know what I have. So it's not even uh, probably for you guys to even watch. Um, kids, if you're watching, sorry I'm dead. Um, but this is actually valuable. You can sell this for about four to five hundred dollars. All right, next. Um, so this one comes with uh, Baccarat glass bottles. Uh, I call them Baccarat. It's a New Yorker's way of pronouncing everything wrong. But it's a, a, actually Baccarat glass. And uh, look how beautiful this glass is. Baccarat glass is one of the finest glass um, ever made and probably still made today in France. So there you go. Another beautiful French and again, olive wood scent caddy box. All right, next. Let's get the next uh, victim. All right, so this one has, well, I'm again, no expert, but it has like the 1860s time frame written all over it. Um, again, I could be wrong. It could be 1850s. Um, and this, I think, is either mahogany or rosewood. And uh, it's quite spectacular. Look at that shine. And I do constantly polish these. And then you have that little brass, little a uh, placard and then another brass placard over there. It's missing its original key. I actually uh, made a key with my Dremel. I got a replica key and I got it to fit in here and work. All right. And wait till you see these bottles. These bottles are exquisite. And here we go. So these are cranberry colored and uh, you don't generally see this color very often. And uh, I absolutely love it. It's um, almost like a graduated color you see like it's more clear on the bottom as you move up we get more cranberry in color these are uh quite spectacular colored glass uh, perfume bottles with the original stoppers on top and um i generally have never seen one of these caddies with bottles this color in it before but then again they're probably out there so that is uh my other uh scent caddy box and i think i have one more to show you before i go i actually have more but i put them away and i don't feel like getting them out um they're like uh, actually entombed in my china gla uh, class 
China, what the hell am I saying? China glass cabinets. And uh, again, I'm having another senior moment. I couldn't get any more out. They were like entombed in my China uh, glass cases. So I'll just show you a little bit more of my scent paraphernalia. <laughs> and I am pretty addicted to these antique scent bottles. And here is a beautiful 19th century, probably late 19th century. Um, actually, it's Italian. But it was made for the uh, Moser in Czechoslovakia, otherwise known as Bohemia um, at the time, glass company. And uh, look at that lollipop stopper. That is quite cool. We can't really get a focus, but look at that enamel work. Um, I mean, that is just absolutely amazing. So there's one cologne bottle right there. Um, here we go. We have the Vapors. And <laughs> the Vapors was what they called uh, people that were having panic attacks in the 1800s. So um, barbarically, they treated it with smelling salts. And uh, so when a lady was having like the vapors, a.k.a. a panic attack, which is probably something I need for my panic attacks, they would have a smelling salt bottle made with little balls that were uh, ammonia. <laughs> ammonia and some kind of like uh, sodium or some crap like that mixed in there. And I have the original uh, scent bottle with ammonia little pellets in there to wake a lady up um, out of her panic attack stupor. And as you can see, uh, psychiatry pretty much sucked back then. You were pretty screwed. You didn't have Xanax. Well, I think you had morphine and cocaine. So I guess you were okay. Here's another antique scent bottle that you would uh, have those little pellets in there with ammonia. Um, I don't have the original pellets like the other bottle, but there you go. Here's another idea um, with a actual sterling silver top that I have to uh, actually polish soon. And there's another scent paraphernalia. Um, here's another thing, a snuff box or a pill box. And this one is probably early 20th century, probably about 1900 to about 1920. I could be wrong. Again, no expert. And you would put uh, your pills and stuff in here or your uh, stuff that like um, would snap you out, out of the vapors. So let's try to open it. I think it might even be gold plated, um, although it's unmarked. Okay, and last but not least, in this antique glass French uh, cut glass la ladies jewelry box, we have a, a plethora of beautiful scent bottles. So if a lady didn't feel like carrying around uh, one of those travel boxes, um, she would have one of these dangling from her waist by a chain. And here's a sword. This is probably about 1880s, 1890s, maybe even the 1870s with enamel work made in Bohemia, probably by Moser. And we have this beautiful, beautiful, probably Austrian or something like that uh, with a cabochon on the top. Um, one that would hang um, with glass and this beautiful gold doré on it, um, hang from her waist. Here's another one. This probably one is the early 20th century, probably about circa 1900. And then we have this beautiful, beautiful um, silver top lay down perfume bottle. Actually, it could be uh, in a standing position, but pretty much it is top heavy and will fall over very, very easy. And it has a beautiful gemstone at the top. And as you can see, it's wobbly. And if I was a lady, I would keep it like that because otherwise I'm a klutz and it would break. So there you go. Um, I showed you some of the interesting scent paraphernalia in my collection. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you didn't hit the back button. Thanks for watching. See you guys all soon. So long.